Treva Throneberry. May 18, 1969, in Wichita Falls, Texas. Carl and Patsy Throneberry welcomed their youngest daughter, Treva, to the family. While she was still young, the family, which included her three sisters and a brother, moved to Electra, Texas. By 1985, everyone in the small town knew the Throneberries. In school, Treva was quiet, but seemed happy and played on the tennis team. She was a car hop at the whistle stop, the local drive-in. Treva was never without her small red Bible. Then, in December 1985, Treva told the Electra police that she had been molested. She accused her father. There was a full investigation and child welfare removed Treva from the home. Treva's three sisters adamantly denied that their father had ever touched them. They all came to their father's defense at trial, where he stated that if Treva had been molested, it must have been by one of the men at the Pentecostal church. The church stepped up to counter these allegations. They said that Treva told them in the weeks before she went to the police that she didn't want to go home. She even snuck out of her house a few times and was found sleeping in the pews at the church. Carl was absolved of all charges, but Treva never returned home to live with her family. She had been placed with a foster family, the Gentries, in Wichita Falls. While staying with the Gentries, Treva attended Wichita Falls High School. Her teachers all said that she was a good student that got good grades. She was regularly seen reading her Bible when she was done with her work. Then Treva began telling strange stories. She told her foster mother, Sharon, that she had been kidnapped by a satanic cult while living in Electra and that she had been forced to participate in their ritual. In May 1986, Treva admitted to a counselor that she was considering jumping from the roof of the school. The police were called and Treva was taken to the state hospital. There she was put on antidepressants and Xanax. She also participated in group therapy. The doctors diagnosed her with a characterological disorder and a possible personality disorder. Treva was released from the state hospital after five months, but her therapist noted in her file that she was unpredictable. Treva was sent to Fort Worth to live in the Lena Pope home. At this residential treatment facility, she was put back into therapy and began attending school at Arlington Heights High School. She graduated in June 1987 at the age of 18. Now that she was an adult, she could no longer live at the treatment facility. After this, Treva roamed the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. She lived with kind strangers and at the YWCA. She worked for a time in a motel in Arlington, Texas as a maid. Somehow, Treva made it to Corvallis, Oregon, where the locals knew her as Keely T. Throneberry Smith. She got a job at McDonald's and was living with a family that took her in after meeting her at church. She told everyone who asked that she was hiding from her abusive father who lived in Dallas. Police were notified and they attempted to find Keeley's father to bring him to justice. After a year in Corvallis, Keeley went missing. Neither she or her father were ever located. That was because she was in Portland telling the same story. As soon as police began to investigate, Keeley was gone again. In 1994, Treva was going by Kara Leanna Davis. She was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho with a new story to tell. Now she was the daughter of a police officer who was a member of a satanic cult. He had raped her and killed her mother. Her next stop was back in Texas. Now she was Kara Williams in Plano. She claimed to be 16 years old when in fact she was really 25. Kara was raised as a high priestess in a satanic cult. Again, she claimed her father was a police officer who raped her. 
Treva lived in a series of foster homes and youth shelters. She accused one of the men working at one shelter of molesting her. She moved from home to home and school to school. At each new school, the one constant was that Treva always joined the tennis team and was usually the worst on the team. The lies almost caught up to Treva in September of 1995. She was placed in a residential treatment center where a staff member recognized her. They had grown up together in Electra. Her case manager was notified. Evidence was gathered to prove Treva's true identity and a court hearing was scheduled. Treva was removed from the foster system. Her case manager sent her into the world to live as an adult with nothing but a quarter and a phone number for a homeless shelter. As she walked out of the courthouse, Treva continued to profess that her name was Kara and that she was 16 years old. In June 1996, Treva had adopted the persona of Emily Kara Williams and was in Asheville, North Carolina. She again claimed to be 16 and that she needed rescue from the cult that she had grown up in. By August, she was Stephanie Williams in Altoona, Pennsylvania. She claimed her father from Memphis, Tennessee would be looking for her. He made and sold child pornography. A note that she wrote in a notebook led her social worker to do some investigating. Her true identity was discovered and Treva was arrested. She served nine days for filing a false police report. She would take on a new name and story in Louisiana, New Jersey, and Ohio. She would stay in shelters and with kind strangers. She would enroll in school after school. The only thing that never seemed to change was her age, 16. Treva refused to grow up. She refused to care for herself. She refused to take any responsibility. It is possible that at this point, she had told so many lies that she no longer even knew what the truth was. Next week, Treva's lies catch up to her in Treva Throneberry Part 2. Please visit www.icantbelieveitsnonfiction.com and don't forget to subscribe.